Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now let's go over part one of the A functions exercise. So if you haven't worked on part one yet, what you want to do is definitely pause this video, go to the link in the description, give it a shot, and then come back to this little guide. So in part zero, we read a few functions and we made sense of how they evaluate. In particular, we emphasized a few things, right? Whenever we call a function, we jump inside of the function definition. And whenever we return out of a function, we go back to where we called it. But now it's over to us. And what we want to do is write a few functions for ourselves. So what we have here are a few prompts and they all tell us to create a file to house our function. And then inside of that file we create, we're going to write our own function and it should satisfy these examples and even give us a nice description of what our function should do. So let me go ahead and do the first one. It's called is div by four and I'll start by creating a file of this name. And so what I like to do is actually copy the prompt into my file. That way I have everything all in one place. So let's take a look at what we have to do here. What I wanna do is write a function is div by four that accepts a number as an argument. And what the function should do is return a Boolean value indicating whether or not the given number is divisible by four. So looking at the examples, if we call is div by four and we pass in the number eight, that should return true, right? Because eight is divisible by four. Likewise, 12 is also divisible by four. If I give another number like nine, I know nine is not divisible by four, so it should return false. So we'll start tackling this one. Let me just start by plucking out information in the prompt that will give me a starting point. In particular, what I wanna do is start by writing a function and even tell us the name of that function. So just some classic function syntax, what I can say is let is div by four equal a function. And they tell me that the function accepts just one argument and I'll call it the number. I call it whatever I want, but I wanna be kind of descriptive and I know it's gonna be of the number type. So now that I have this number, what do I want to do? Well, I want to return a Boolean checking whether or not this number is divisible by four. And when it comes to all matters of divisibility, right, hopefully you're catching on to this pattern. What you can do is use modulo. And so in particular, if I take some number and I mod it by four, if the remainder is zero, then I know it's divisible by four. And so what you could do here is write an if statement if you wanted to, and I can say if, and in English, what I want to express is if the number is divisible by four. And now in JavaScript, I can say if num mod four is equal to zero, right, then it must be divisible. And so if it's divisible, then they tell me to return like the true Boolean, right? So I'll just return true. And otherwise I can just return false. Cool, so there we have this one. Let's go ahead and test it. So I'll make sure I have my file saved. And when I execute this file, I should get all of these prints, right? So I wanna check my work against these console.logs. So let's give it a go. So I get three trues and two false in that order. And there we have it. So this is just one way you could have solved is div by four. And so in this solution, we used if statements, right? We used conditionals and we wrote a Boolean expression as our condition, right? When this is true, we return true. And when it's false, we return false. You may notice that we can also actually write this without using conditionals, right? If you notice the little pattern here, we know that the return true happens when our condition is true. The return false happens when our condition is false. So what you could also do is actually just cut out the middleman. Possibly the shortest way of writing this is just taking this Boolean expression and returning it in the first place. Cause we know that it already evaluates uh, to a Boolean, right? So a really quick check. Let's say that we're stepping through the second to last example here. So my num is nine. So when we evaluate this function, we know num is nine. And we're checking is nine divisible by four. That statement is false because when I do nine mod four, that gives me one. I check is one equal to zero, that's false. So I just return false and there I have my final answer. So this is actually some much shorter code to write, whichever one you prefer though, but do try to understand both of these solutions. So that was our first one. Let's go on to keep it quiet. So I'll copy this and put it in its own file. And so in this function, what I wanna do is take in a string as an argument and return the lowercase version of the string with some three periods attached to the end of it. So a few things I notice in the examples, looks like my input string may have some different types of capitalization, but no matter what, I always wanna convert it into the fully lowercase version and then just concatenate some dots at the end. So this is nothing too fancy. Let's go ahead and write this one. So don't forget our function syntax, right? I'm gonna create a variable and I assign to it a function. It's gonna take in a string as an argument. I'll just call it str. And then from here, I think I can solve this in a one liner. What I can just do is return some data in particular, I want to return an expression where I take my string, my input string, convert it to lowercase, like they say. Don't forget to call the to lowercase function. 
So this will give me the lowercase version of my input string. And then I also want to add three dots at the end of this or three periods. So I'll do plus a string of three periods. And that should be all we need to get this one going. Cool, and there's our keep it quiet function. And so on to this is long function now. So in this one, what I wanna do is take in a string as an argument and return a Boolean indicating whether or not the string is longer than five characters. So looking at a few of these examples, if I'm given the string pi, that is not longer than five characters, so I return false. If I am given a longer string like restaurant, that is definitely longer than five characters, so I return true. And notice some details here. If I look at the example for kitty, that has exactly five characters and we should return false because the description says I only want to return true uh, when my string is longer than five characters, right? So let's go ahead and bang this one out. So nothing too fancy. I'm going to define my function definition is long and we're going to be defining so many functions you know, in this chapter because of course, it's probably going to be the most common thing you write uh, as a programmer. And what I want to do is take in a string. And I'll solve this in like a one liner to start. So what I can do is just check, hey, is the string's length greater than five? And I know that this will evaluate to a Boolean and it's exactly the Boolean I want to return. So this is actually a really short function to write. So I'll give it a go. Cool, so there I have it. And if you wanted to, you could also solve this using some conditionals. So if you wanted to do that or just wanna go through the motions, you can use this expression as your conditional. And then when the string is longer than five characters, you return true. Otherwise, it's not longer than five characters, so return false. It's really the same logic. Of course, I'll probably prefer to keep the first one, though, because it's a little bit shorter. Not too shabby. Let's go ahead to this half function. So in this function, all I want to do is return half of the number that I'm given, right? So for example, half of 8 is 4, half of 15 is 7.5, and so on. So I'll just define my function definition. Really nothing fancy here. Take in some number. I'll just call it n this time. And I want to return simply n divided by two. This should be our final solution. Nothing too fancy here. Don't overthink any of these problems, right? So let's turn up the difficulty a little bit and let's work on this ends with t problem. So in this function, I wanna take in a string as an argument. And what I want to do is return whether or not the string ends in the character t, right? So a Boolean value over here. So if I pass in smart, I should return true because of course it ends in t. If I pass in taco, that should return false because taco does not end in t. So I'm gonna to need to be wise with what patterns I use over here, but I know at least I need to define a function with the name ends with T. So I'll make that function. It's going to expect a string, I'll call it str. And how can I solve this one? Well, I really want to grab and analyze the last character of a string, and we know that string pattern, right? So in general, because I have some generic string, what I want to do is maybe create a variable, right? Just to make it a little clearer, so I'll say last char. What I can say is that last character is equal to the string at a particular index. So now within these brackets, I need to write an expression that evaluates to the last index of any string, which I know in general is string.length minus one, right? The last index is always one less than length. For example, if I have smart, its length is five, but its final index is four, because I go zero, one, two, three, four. So now that I have this last character, what I want to do is return true if that character is a lowercase t. So simply put, I can just check last char equals a t. All right here, I'm just comparing a character to another character, and that will give me a Boolean value as a result, right? It's either true or false. So nothing too fancy here either. Let's go ahead and try this. And there we have our ends with t. So let's work on our average problem now, the last one in the set. And so in this function, what I wanna do is take in three numbers as arguments and just return their average. So let's start attacking this one. So I'm gonna define my function average. Of course, takes in three numbers. I'll call them num1, num2, and num3, respectively. And when it comes to an average, like you already know from math, it's a matter of just adding up all of my things. That should give me their total sum. And I divide that sum by the number of things. So I need to add up these three numbers and divide them by three. So you can write a one-liner if you like. What you can do is do num1 plus num2 plus num3, and then divide that quantity by three. But if you do that, be aware of the order of operations, right? Technically, if I just had this expression, uh, the division operation would have the highest precedence. But what you want to do is take the total sum first and then divide it by three. So you're gonna need to state the precedence using some parentheses. So let's give this one a shot. Nice, and there we have our average. 
All right, so that's the full walkthrough for the A exercise for functions. What I want you to do is go over all of these problems, right? And make sure you can solve them and understand them on your own because in the next exercise right after this, we're gonna turn up the difficulty. So redo these problems, watch the walkthrough again if you need to. Once you feel totally confident, go on to the next one.